How are you? Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. Congratulations. Thank you. How are you doing these days? Is it, uh, is it a bit overwhelming? Um, it's exciting, for sure. I feel I've, I've been great recently. Um, yeah, we're working on a lot of music, uh, new stuff coming up, working on the show. Shows are picking up again, uh, all these Juno nominations. It's like a, yeah, a nice positive time, so I'm, I'm excited. Is it a bit weird to have all of this happen when we couldn't go outside? Like, I feel like things yeah. really took off for you you know, and during a time when we weren't able to see anyone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, it's definitely weird because we uh, put out our first album last year in April. Yeah. Uh, and it was obviously right into the, yeah, pandemic craze. Um, but I feel like it's also been a time of, like, trying to reinvent ways to stay in contact with fans and, and, and working on little snippets of music on social media and... and rediscovering these things that yeah are different but are also fun but it's definitely nice to just get back into actual shows and seeing actual physical human beings yeah That's, i apologize yeah. If this is the first person you <laughs> have to see but but i'm but i am I'm, I'm happy that you get a chance to see people who's yeah. who your music means something to like you're about to do some shows like yeah i feel like you haven't gotten that big roar of applause yet for all that that people feel uh, about you right now yeah. you know what i mean yeah i mean it's definitely exciting to just like share actual live music with an audience um and it's not something we've really had the chance to do with the album yet but we played a few shows here and there a few festivals in the summer but yeah it's gonna be nice to just kick off the actual tour mm -hmm. so Charlotte Cardin is the most nominated artist at the 2022 Juno Awards for her debut album, Phoenix, is the headline I'm seeing everywhere. Yes. So what, what goes through your mind with that? <laughs> um, it's, yeah, I'm still a little bit surprised and, and, and shocked and excited about all of this. Um, we, I mean, I obviously did not expect that at all. Um, so it's just, it's just really exciting and it's, it's an honor because truly like we worked on the album for almost four years like it took forever for us to find the direction of the album also i need to, i needed to explore very like personal parts of me to be able to write those songs and so it's it's been a, a process of like roller coasters and ups and downs and all of these things and i really wanted to write that album for me in the first place and so putting it out and seeing that people um relate to the songs that people kind of see themselves through these super personal stories that i wrote is just wonderful because i went through a super like healing process uh writing this album and i really wanted to do it for me so putting it out and and having this type of recognition yeah. is is wonderful and and yeah. where, where were you where were you when you found out about the the nominations i was uh in paris at my apartment i kind of share my time between paris and montreal like i do a lot of uh uh, back and forth and um, so it was so the evening when you found it was out. the evening yeah, right. and I was just like sitting on my couch and and getting ready because I, I had an event that night but I, I kept getting voice notes from my team uh, and my parents who were just like screaming in their phone and like every category that was announced I would get like my dad screaming like artist of the year like just so excited and so it was definitely a super yeah exciting moment and who did you call uh, first, yeah. my boyfriend was uh -huh. the first one to know. He didn't pick up, so, oh, he, come so on. yeah, I know, right? So he's out. So, so, he, so <laughs> I left him. <laughs> We're no longer together. Yeah, I'm breaking the news um, yeah. right now. <laughs> uh, and then you I called, called your boyfriend right away. Yeah, I called my boyfriend right away. And then I called my producer, Jason, who co-wrote the entire album. He mm. was aware of the nominations, but we just, like, yeah, had a little uh, exciting little conversation about, like, how... Yeah, happy we were about the nominations. You know, what I love about this story is that um, it's like the culmination of a lot of your life leading up to this record. Like the experiences you've had, the relationships that you've had, the kind of growth that you had to do leads to this record that finally is the one that sort of breaks you out in a, in a, in a really major way. And you've been on the show a couple of times now mm -hmm. um, talking about your music, but I realized I've never really talked to you about about kind of how it started for you. Mm. So what were the earliest memories you have of 
singing or, or even liking music? I mean, those memories go way back because I feel like music has always been an important part of my life. I grew up in a very musical family. Uh, my mom played the piano. My dad is a huge rock and roll fan. So there's always music playing. Like what? What was he playing around the house? So he was playing like Led Zeppelin, um, uh, the Rolling Stones, right. uh, Radiohead, mm -hmm. ACDC, like the, even like the Beatles, more classic stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and my mom was more into like singer songwriters. So, so a lot of chansons françaises, mm -hmm. a lot of like Quebecois singer songwriters. Um, like you, and, like you. Like Daniel Bélanger, mm. um, like Joe Dassin, mm. like um, yeah, Michel Sardou, all these like yeah, great French yeah. singer songwriters and Quebecois artists as well. Um, and so there's always loads of music playing around the house. And when I was, I mean, I started singing when I was like three or four. It's we actually have videos of me like singing when I didn't even really know how to talk yet. I was like two and I was kind of like always singing or, and humming and um, so it's always been an important part of me but I started taking singing lessons when I was about seven or eight. What kind of stuff were you singing there? Like was it classical music or? I, so yeah it was classical music for like the I guess the technique but I was always singing pop songs so like Avril Lavigne, mm -hmm. uh, Celine Dion, like all these like yeah, I guess really good pop female artists that I grew up looking up to. Um, and those are kind of like the first, my big musical revelations. Uh, and uh, I just took singing lessons for years, but it was more of a hobby than anything that I expected to maybe do something serious with. I just, Were you performing? Were you? I was only performing like for my family and for my, you know, for like the little concerts that we'd have at the end of the year with all the other singing students that my teacher had and their families. So it's, it was very, very like amateur, right. you know, concerts. Um, Did your friends know that you were singing? Did your friends know that you, yeah. you know, like? I always sang for my friends. When I started writing music, when I was a teenager, I would like play my songs for my friends, but it was, I guess it was like more of a secret dream that I had just because I didn't know anyone that did music in a professional way. Yeah. I didn't really have a reference. I didn't know it was even like possible to do music for a living. Yeah. Uh, both my parents are scientists, so they really don't have... Scientists? Yeah, they're both scientists and very, you know, very rational, but they're also, they also have like a very musical side, yeah. but it's just... I guess, yeah, not something I knew was possible to do for a living. And eventually I realized that it was truly my only and main passion and that it was something that I really wanted to do. But it took, yeah, it took years and years for me to figure out that it was, um, I guess, like a, a, such a deep passion that I, I needed to do music for a living and there wasn't really any other option for me. What were the first songs about? That I wrote? Yeah. Um, the very first song that I wrote, I remember it, it was about like war and how humans have been like treating each other in such a horrible way. And it was, I was 13 or 14 and it was for my English class at school. We had a project where we had to write a song um, and I like pushed it a little bit further. I like recorded the song on my computer and did like a little demo and played it for the class. And that was like my first time writing a song. And it was very dark. It was like I was rhyming the words homicide and suicide. Oh, so like good. it was a good. very good. good. What a lovely, was, yes, what a lovely like, treat you know, for the class. It was a yeah. treat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's really funny. I wish I could like find the song. I just remember that because it's well, so Well, take a listen to this. Yeah. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> Imagine. I'm only joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but so it was very dark. But I started writing songs about like little crushes I had on boys and 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 all these things that were like. I guess just me as a teenager, yeah, realizing stuff that was happening around me and, and trying to figure out how I was feeling about different things. And that's still like what I write about, I guess, but I've evolved since a yeah, little, a little bit. Yeah, your rhyme scheme has gotten a lot better. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. Have hopefully. you, was there a moment you had to tell, um, cause I think there's something, I think there's something about your parents being into music Mm -hmm. But still, they're scientists, they're very rational, yeah. they want a very normal life for you, I'm sure. Was there a moment where you kind of had to go, like, guys, I know this is not going to be conventional, but I think I want to I do this? Yeah, so I, 
At one point, I dropped out of Cégep. Cégep is like yeah. in between high school and college mm -hmm. in Quebec. Um, I mean, no, I, I, I took a break from Cégep for like a year because I needed to figure stuff out. And I ended up, I finished my Cégep, but I never went to college. And obviously my parents went to college for like forever. They studied, they both have like post PhDs and studying was really important for them. Yeah. Um, and so that was like my biggest fear was like telling them that I wouldn't be going to college, not for at least, you know, the next 20 years. I was like, maybe when you know, I'm old, I'll go back to college. But, but when I told them, they were like, well, yeah, obviously, like you need to pursue this. Like, this is too special. And I was like, oh. So really like they were super supportive of it the whole time. And I thought it was gonna be like a big announcement. And they were like, no, like this makes total sense. Like you should pursue music right now. Like this makes, so I was really, I guess, surprised and, and, and lucky to have a family that was so supportive. They were always very supportive of my music, but I guess I thought they would be more disappointed than they actually were about me not Probably because you studies. were scared too, you know? I was definitely scared. You know scared. what I mean? We yeah, were probably yeah. anticipating their yeah. disapproval because you were kind I of, was scared too, for yeah. sure. And I was always a good student. I always liked going to school. I was yeah. good in school. I, I, at one point I was like, I'm going to become a doctor. Like my life is, this is something that I think I can achieve and, and have something planned out. But after like a certain point, I was like, you know what, this is... I don't want I don't want to do this. Like it's just something that made sense given my I guess my my family history and stuff that I thought was expected for me but that really wasn't. That was just something that I was probably pressuring myself to do, but yeah, doing music for a living is obviously the best decision I've ever made because but the route is interesting, right? Because yeah. so you do that and then you go on La Voix, then you go on this like mm -hmm. massive reality show here. Yeah. We have we have a clip. Yeah. Can can, can, can we play it? Yeah. <laughs> That's my dad screaming. Was that your dad doing what? Yeah, screaming when they You can hear him? Yeah, he was like, that's him. <laughs> that's so great. <laughs> so what are we listening to? Uh, that was my first blind audition on the vo on La Voix. On the voice, yeah, La Voix. Um, and it was, you know, I'm No Good by Amy Winehouse. Um, that was such a weird, it's, it's so weird to hear that now because it was, it was a, my first, like, I want to, I don't even want to say like professional music experience because obviously it's not representative of the industry at all when you're on that type of show. But at the time it was like the closest, you know, thing to like professional music that I have ever been involved in. Um, and it was, I was 18. I had never auditioned for anything. I was still very like shy about my music, had no, I had no, confidence or I, I had no idea that people wanted to hear me like it was just so weird to me to even um yeah be on the show I a friend of mine dared me to audition to the very first audition that's not um filmed just like in a hotel and and I was like oh it'll be good to just audition for something like I've never done that I really saw it as just like a, a one-off like I'm just gonna audition and it's like a personal challenge and I guess like making it to the finals of that show, like every step I didn't win, which was a blessing because it's not, yeah, it's not good to win these things because the contracts are very aggressive and anyways, but. Um, I want to say that again. So I know we've talked about this a little bit before. It was a blessing not to win. In my case, it was, I think it was an absolute blessing not to win because how it works is when you sign up for a show like that. Yeah. I think it's pretty standard for every, you know, like reality singing, performing show. Okay. Um, is you sign a contract before you've even been on TV for the first time. So everyone that makes it to like the first, I guess, like film shoot, but that maybe won't even make it to the cut, maybe won't even be on TV, you sign the exact same contract that ties you with a certain label for a certain number of years uh, for and every it's a standard contract but it's really aggressive right. and it's not that it's not the type of 
contract that's really good for an artist to have, or at least not for most artists. Yeah. Um, and so, or I think for any artist, yeah. really. Um, and so when you win, the contract has been signed six months ago before you even knew whether you were going to make it to the first show or the last or, the, you know, so it's, it's, um, it's definitely, and, and I know a lot of artists that have been tied to labels for, yeah, for years and years and, and like decades because they've signed a contract like that before no one even knew about them. Um, so needless to say, like once I finished and, and, and didn't win, it was, it was good because I had the exposure that kind of got me a little start of a, of a fan base, people that discovered me on that show. And obviously since then, like my fan base has evolved and I have evolved a lot, but I still have a few fans that discovered me on there and I was able to. But you didn't right away. Like you didn't, no. you didn't do what would, I think people would normally expect, which is that like you get a major pop from that show, you get a lot of exposure, you know, people in Quebec especially start knowing you, you, you have name recognition, you start to get recognized, all that stuff. There's like a, a an industry logic, which would be, okay, well, let's strike while the iron's hot as soon as we can, yeah. let's get something out. So you go, you go, you go back to school. Yeah, for a year, yeah. And then you, and you take a couple of years before you put anything out. Yeah, I took, I had no idea who I was as an artist at that time. And, you know, when you're on The Voice, you only sing covers. So I was like, okay, I like built a small fan base of people that discovered me for the covers that I've been doing and they like my style and they like my voice, but they, I don't even know who I am as an artist. Like, I feel like it's not an honest relationship with my fan base yet because like I haven't given them who I really am, because I don't fucking know. Yeah. Like, I need to figure it out. Yeah. And so once I got off the show, and obviously there's like this like instant fame, like yeah. it's, it's weird. But that, it's, doesn't that take some, like where does that come from to not just take that? Like, because to, to so many yeah. of us, when you're 13 or 14, you want to be Avril Lavigne and yeah, you want to yeah, be yeah. Celine, and all of a sudden that's there and but, it's easy. It yeah. takes something in can, you to Yeah, to, and there's a lot of pressure as well when you get out of the show, like you have offers from different, you know, from different parts that and there's like money involved and there's and it's weird, but I guess the one thing that that made me want to wait is that I I felt like I wasn't happy with exactly what I had given on the show. Like what I had sh showed people wasn't um, up to, I guess, like what I knew I was able to give yeah. and I was like I need to figure it out because I I know I have more potential than like what these people have seen and I could easily like sign a contract with a record label and try to like exploit what they've seen but that's such a small part of like what I know I'm capable of that I don't want that so I, I walked away from that and it was the best decision ever because you know obviously listening to those it's like it's a it's a different life. It's like a different person almost because it was just me starting and, and poking at different things and trying to find out who I was as an artist. It wasn't, that wasn't the end game, obviously. But that takes so much strength, like inner awareness at such a young age mm. to know that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I had a lot of people giving me really good advice around me. I've, I, I was lucky to have, I guess, like a family that... that yeah, understood what I wanted and, and helped me take my time because I it wasn't an easy decision and I was I was a little bit torn at one point, but I guess yeah, it was it was a really good decision. Wait, but it feels like a it feels like something I, I can trace kind of throughout your life. So I wanted to just ask a question about modeling. Mm. <laughs> Cause you and I have that in common. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like how much you laughed, by the way. I'm a little offended by how much you laughed and how quick and abrupt the yeah. laugh was. <laughs> you modeled from when, to, from when to when? From 14 or 15 to 20. Here's my question about modeling. How do I get into it? No, yeah. <laughs> do they need jean jacket models? <laughs> when you're modeling, you are at the whims of somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You are 
not just being photographed by somebody else, the shoots are being set up by somebody else. Yeah, everything is In it. post, it's done, you know, like you're being edited by somebody else. You're a, kind of a vessel. Mm. You're kind of a, you know, a symbol, you're a model. Mm. It feels like the opposite of songwriting. Yeah. Where you have, you know what I mean? Where you have like control and creative, it's, yeah, I'm sorry. No, you're right, you, no, please, but, please. But, it's, yeah, that's a perfect um, analogy because that's the main thing that I didn't like about modeling was that, is that I, you know, you're like an object in a lot of ways and, and people decide everything for you and you have no say in anything and like what you're wearing, you know, what you're selling basically. Um, and there's, I, I had an issue with that. I had a big problem with that and, and Modeling was never for me. It was really like something I did because I was lucky enough to like make a little bit of money and be like financially stable-ish yeah. for a few years and like buy instruments and focus on my music and go out with my friends. And it was never like a big ambition of mine. It was never something I wanted to like pursue as a career, um, but I hated it. And for a lot of reasons, but especially for that, I just felt like, there was, you're never like valued for what you have to say or, or, you're, or how smart you are or how creative and, and kind you are. It's just like you are like, a, an, em like an empty shell. And, and, and that's just something I've always struggled with a lot when I was doing that. Um, and that's why I think I wasn't a very good model because I was like resisting a lot of these things. I wasn't able to just go with it. And, and, and so, yeah, but I, yeah, I hated I hated the whole, um, the whole situation. Are you, are you a different songwriter or like, has being and having been a model influenced your songwriting? I think it has. I think it, it has because it, it certainly influenced me as a woman, as um, like a human being who, wanted to be valued for, or to, I wanted to find, um, I guess, a way to, to see myself for the right reasons, and modeling was the opposite of that for me. To just, see myself to, for I, the I, right I, Sorry, I, I mean, like, it's hard to explain. Just, just trying to see the world with, like, the eyes of, through the eyes of someone that was figuring everything out. And I think modeling had me um, question myself for the wrong reasons for a long time. And I think that now that I have full control over like what I want to say and the way that I want to express things and, and how I can use a creative output to, yeah, to, to express how I see the world, and how yeah. I see my relationships and, and stuff is just such a, an, a completely opposite life that I think it, it, probably made me even like hungrier for that like creative part of me. That's beautiful. I think it, it, it has made me a better songwriter because I'm hungrier for those things, for that like honesty that I wasn't able to have for so long when I was just, you know, used for parts of me that I didn't even really like. If I had, if I ever have a daughter, I would want her to use her time and energy to do, you know, obviously more creative things than, than I would try to have her not go through what I had to go through because I'm, I feel like I'm still trying to build parts of me that were destroyed during that short period of time and, and like, rebuild. Like just like overall self-esteem is just like something that's so precious and it's something that's so fragile at the same time. Yeah. And when you're that young, you're obviously very easily shapeable and m manipulated and, and, and I feel like it's an industry that will exploit that if you're not careful or if you're not like super solid. And so I still have like insecurities now that come directly from things that I went through at that age. And, and I think, and that's okay. Like I'm, 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 I use them in a, in a, in a positive way because I convert them into, you know, creating songs and, and, and things that I consider beautiful now, but it's definitely something that shaped my life in a very important way and that I 
would probably not want my daughter or son to, to ever go through. I mean, that, that A, <laughs> thank you for saying that. And, and thanks for talking to me about that. I know it's not easy to talk yeah. about. And it's, okay. know, it's it, it, it makes, um, it fills in a couple of blanks for me on the record. Mm. This makes a yeah. little, you know what I mean? This yeah. makes, this, all of a sudden, some parts of the record are making a little bit more sense to me. I want to play just one, one clip that might um, exemplify that. Take a listen. Then you made me rich and famous, living legend, lies and games. I died in vain, blowing my own ashes in the wind. Tell me what you want me to do. I'll do it for you. I'll do it for anyone who loves me. Tell really me beautiful song. Thank you. There's a quote that I wanted to ask you about when it comes to this album. I wrote this album thinking of what I wanted to give hmm. rather than trying to anticipate what people were expecting from me. Yes. What does that mean? That is correct. Um, it means that I had to write this album for me. And I feel like my entire life I did, and that also um, can be related to the modeling years, but, but really my entire life, ever since like I was a kid, I always kept in mind what I thought people were expecting from me before doing something or, or, or kind of trying to anticipate the things that were ex expected from me before making different decisions. And, and now, when I started writing this album, I knew that I had to completely set that aside. What was expected from you? I mean, I'm not, I, those are things that I thought were expected for me to like behave a certain way and, and talk a certain way and present myself a certain way and, and look a certain way and all these things that I think a lot of women generally probably uh, struggle with because there are huge, um, how do you say that, like these attentes, like things that are expected from you um, mm -hmm. when you're a woman, um, wh whichever field you, you work in or background you have. Um, and I wanted to completely let go of that for this album. I wanted it to be an honest album uh, that I would write for me because I knew that I needed to touch base with really important parts of me that I hadn't really had a chance to explore because I was writing music for a long time, thinking of like what would be cool and what would be, you know, what people would maybe want to hear from someone like me or, or from from the music that they I thought was expected which makes no sense because you know that's obviously not the way to do music or at least to do honest music yeah um and so I wanted to let go of that for this album and so it was a, a huge process of ups and downs to write the album but but I ended up releasing a record that I'm really really proud of how, do, how do you do that how do you how do you let go of that so the album took four years to write um, for that reason, um, partly, because I started writing it um, by myself for like six months and trying to, I guess, like going through these old patterns that I had, trying to write music that maybe wasn't as honest as I needed it to be or wanted it to be. Um, and I was also very like protective of my own songs. Like I wanted to do everything myself, write uh, the music and the lyrics and keep that for me. And, and I don't know if it's something that was like either ego based or just an insecurity that's, I, I just felt like I needed to prove certain things, I guess, writing everything alone. And after a few months of not really getting anywhere with that same process that I had been going through for years, I was like, okay, I need to switch things up. And I talked to my producer, Jason, who's been my main creative partner for the last eight or nine years. And he was like, let's like just try writing together and like doing s sessions with other people. And I was like, yeah, but what if like, it doesn't get as personal as I would want it to be like. And you just told me that you were deferring your entire life up to that point to other people. It must've been, a yeah. story, you know what I mean? Yes, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, it was, for me, it was something that I thought that I would have to sacrifice a really important part of me if I was like sharing that with other people. But really, 
when I just welcomed, and I've been, I wrote this album with close friends. It's not like strangers. And so when I started co-writing and telling my personal stories to the few people that were in the room with me, and we started talking about these things that were so important to me that I thought I was expressing through my songs before. I was like, wow, no, like this is a complete revelation because people are like relating to these things. My friends are like, helping me figure out the exact words that I want to use to express this feeling that I've had forever that I wasn't able to express. There was this moment of like sharing and, and really letting go of like this little like precious thing that I was trying to nurture, but that really wasn't as honest as what I've been doing ever since I discovered co-writing, if that makes any sense. What makes sense to me, I mean, it all makes sense. Yeah. But what really makes sense to me there is that like, it feels like the lesson you learned there was that you can put your trust into other people as long as they are deserving of it. Yes, exactly. You know what I mean? That's, that's exactly it. And, and that's something that I had, I guess, yet to discover with music, but I did with this album a few years ago when we started writing it and it's it it changed my life completely and it makes it so much more fun as well because you're like sharing personal things but it's you know everyone's um you know is with people that have my back it's not like anyone that's, that's going to use that against me it's just we're trying to make something beautiful out of something very personal and that's just yeah that's it for me Man, it really seems like you came around on this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I'm seeing the journey now. And yeah. It's, it's 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 beautiful. Are you are, are you still writing in French? Are you writing new songs in French? Because it's so um it's it's really interesting to me that you can write so personally and beautifully in, in English sometimes, you know. Mm. Are you writing are the new songs you're writing in French or in English? In English. Yeah. In English. I've always um found it easier to write in English. Um but I do think that I can show and express different parts of me in both languages, and they're both um, parts that make me who I am, and so mm -hmm. I, I would never want to sacrifice either. Mm -hmm. um, it's important for me to express myself in both languages, mm -hmm. and I love writing in, Engl in English because I get to yeah, express certain things that I probably wouldn't express the same way in French. Um, but it's it's all they're both natural to me, and I've always um, you know my, my my grandma's from Alberta. My a lot of my friends are Anglophone. It's mm -hmm. always been very bilingual around me, so it's never really been like a question for me, like whether or like a decision. It's always just been like a natural thing to write in both languages. And at one point, maybe I'll do a French album, and I. You know, I'd love that, man. I'd love to hear. I think there's, there's a French song on the record that I really, really love. There is a French song, yeah. Yeah, and I thought um, it was beautiful. Thank you. But yeah, eventually I'll definitely work on a more French project, but it's, we'll see. I'm not sure. Yeah, I can, I, can, I can model for the... Yeah. <laughs> for the like, album cover. I really wish you wouldn't laugh as much. Um, the uh, um, Fans' Choice nomination is an interesting mm -hmm. one because it's, it is, it must be, how do I put this now? To have enough fans support, nominate you and, 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 and put you up for this, like, People's Choice Award mm. while the majority of those fans probably came to you. I mean, they did come to you during this time when you couldn't see them. Yes, yeah. Must be an interesting feeling. That's super interesting. And it's also, yeah, it's also, it's, it's also really exciting to know that you can, like, stay in contact with your fans and your audience without seeing them in a live way. Like there was something for me that was very reassuring and, and, and stimulating during this whole pandemic is that I, I fe I've always felt like the live aspect of the project was obviously a very important one. I, I always loved performing live. I feel like you create really beautiful connections with your audience. There are really wonderful things that happen live. And I was really afraid that the project would lose some kind of, not necessarily like momentum, but but that yeah. without that, like yeah. you'd lose something. And so I was trying to think of like ways to 
stay in touch with fans. And I started doing like little covers on Instagram and just like little things, like silly little ways to, I guess, stay connected. And I feel like that made me feel really good during the pandemic because there was still this interaction, but on a completely different level. Uh, I also felt like I was getting more open also to communicating with fans in a way that I hadn't you're Singing really... duets with them on TikTok and you're... You yeah, know, yeah, 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 I did yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I also like signed up on TikTok like, because mm-hmm. I didn't use TikTok before and it, mm-hmm. that's been like a super fun platform as well. So it's just like new ways to keep in touch and, and it's been, yeah, it's been really fun and stimulating and different. When the night is over... What are you going to do? How are you going to celebrate? How will I celebrate? I will definitely um, drink champagne with my friends and and just celebrate the fact that we were, yeah, that this has been a really stimulating and creative year and all these beautiful things happened. And whatever happens tonight, I'm just so happy that we were a part of this. Like, I'm so proud to be um, a female artist from Quebec, represented here is just like really special and it hasn't happened that many times in the past and so I'm just proud to yeah to be here and we're gonna have fun. I'm I gotta tell you man like it's been so lovely to get to know you over the years and to see um to see that growth of you kind of taking control over your own life and your own music and to now kind of know the story of why that was so particularly important to you how rare it is, both through reality shows and through modeling, yeah. <laughs> to end up in this place where you don't just make a record that is so personal to you, but is loved by people and they feel it's personal to them. Mm. Like, what else do you want? Thank you. It's so lovely to Thank talk to you. Thank you so much. Likewise, Thanks these for- interviews are always really fun.